Hello everyone, Reza here. In today's video, I will show you an integration between SharePoint and Power Automate approvals. We will build an approval flow to track the entire approval process. And in SharePoint, we will leverage column formatting to enhance that approval process experience by showcasing an approval timeline, which highlights the status of the approval, along with the approval history, how long the approvers took to respond to their respective approval actions, and a lot more. So let's check it out in action. The use case here is a help desk application, the data for which is stored in a SharePoint list. Here I have three tickets with different statuses, and I have an approval timeline that shows where we are in the approval process. Plus, if I was to click on it, it will showcase the entire approval history from the person who started the approval to the approvers in order in which they have responded. It also includes the time each of those approvers took to respond as well as their comments. For the tickets that are in pending status, we can look at who the current task is assigned to. So right now the task is assigned to Reza and James. I have a link here that allows me to chat directly with the approvers. So if I was to select this, launch Microsoft Teams and deep link into a chat conversation with those users. At the same time, we can also look at how long the approval is spending since the task has been assigned to these users. And this is a live timer Right now it's showcasing 45 minutes. And we can see how this live timer keeps moving ahead. Now all of this is possible through a combination of two things, SharePoint column formatting and Power Automate approvals. Let's create a ticket and look at the process in action. This will launch the SharePoint form. In this case, I have customized it using Power Apps. I'm gonna put in the details of my ticket. I'll select my ticket category as IT, define my ticket priority, and save. Now the moment I add my ticket, the status of the ticket is new, and the approval timeline showcases that. If I select this, there is no current history that is available. Once the approval process begins, the approval timeline will automatically move from the new status to the pending status. And we can see this in action live in SharePoint once the flow triggers. So the ticket status is now in pending. The approval timeline highlights that. If I was to select this, it gives us the name of the person who started the approval process and the date and time at which the approval process was started. The approvers here are being picked dynamically based upon the category of the ticket that the user selects. And if we look at my departments list, this is where the categories are being loaded from. For category IT, my approvers are Reza and James. The approval process has just started, so the timer here that is doing a live calculation of the time since the approval is pending showcases that information. So Reza gets an email from Power Automate in which Reza can see all the details of the approval. And Reza can either approve or reject the request. So in this case, let's say I approve this request. Reza puts in the commands and submits the approval response. James also receives the same approval request. The approval pattern is everyone must approve. So both Reza and James have to say approved in order for the ticket to be approved. And let's say James says approved, puts in commands, submits. Now, since both the approval decisions have been logged, the flow would go ahead and update the status of the ticket. And we can see that live in action here. And if I was to select this, we can see the complete history of this entire approval process in the timeline. So let's try and build some of the key components of this solution from scratch. So I'll create a list, create a blank list. I'll call this my ticket data list and click create. We'll add a description column. I'll add a choice column for the status of my ticket. Provide my statuses and click save. Add a multi-line of text column. I'll call this my approval timeline. 
I also need a column to track the date at which the approval process has started. So I'll add a column, date and time, and I will include the time aspect here and click save. And I would also like to show who the current task is assigned to, who are the approvers. So I'll go to add a column. In this case, I'll keep it extremely simple. I'll use a single line of text column and I'm calling this assigned to, I'll click save. For the status column, when a new ticket gets created, I want to set a default value here to new. In Power Automate, I'll select an automated cloud flow since I want the flow to trigger when an item is created directly inside my SharePoint list. So that's my trigger. I'll click create. I'll pick my SharePoint site. I'll pick my SharePoint list. I would like to first update that item with specific details. The ID will come from my trigger action dynamic content. So I'll select this. Any mandatory fields I would have to refill. So for title, I'll select the title from my trigger. The status is what I would like to change now since the approval process will start. I will change the status in this case to pending. Approval timeline, I would like to first put in a message that says that the approval process has started. Now I'm a big fan of emojis. So right here, I'll press the Windows key along with dot. I'll select the rocket emoji. And I can say that the approval has been started by, now I need the name of the person who's created the ticket. So I can get that directly from dynamic content. If I search for created by, I can pick the display name. Put the clock emoji. The approval is started at. I can use the created dynamic content column. Now this created date will come back in UTC format in Power Automate. So let's try and add some expressions to enhance that experience. So under expressions here, I can use the convert from UTC expression. The first parameter is a timestamp. So I can go to dynamic content and pick the created column. The second parameter is the destination time zone. So I've put in Pacific standard time. And the third parameter here, you can add formatting to your dates. So I've just put in the format and I'll click OK. Now in this case, I'm going to keep the approval process extremely simple. I'm just going to assign this to one user. In my case, my approval will always be Reza. I'm just going to hard code my name. An approval pending since is the date and time at which the approval process will be created, which is right after this action, which is the current date and time at which this flow is running. So once again, I can go to expression and put the expression UTC now. Next, I'll add a new step. Search for approval and pick the start and wait for an approval action. I only have one approval here, so I'll pick first to respond. My title would be the title of the ticket. Assign to, in this case, I'm hard coding this to Reza. I can put in details of the ticket here, like the title, description, and other details. I can provide a link to the item. All of these are dynamic properties. Next, I'll add a condition to check the outcome of the approval. There's a dynamic property called outcome. If this is equal to approve, in that case, I would once again like to update the item. Now, instead of adding that action again, I'll just go right here and copy. Go to my clipboard and paste it. So if it's approved, in that case, the status would change to approved. The approval pending since this now needs to change to null because I want to clear that date time field. And the assigned to, I will set this as empty. Now for the approval timeline, this is where I need to put in certain details about the approval. So I'm going to remove this. So here I can say approved by and pick the name of the approver. So there's a dynamic content property called responses approver name. So I'll select this. Now the moment I do that, it will apply this for loop because responses is an array. In my case, I only have one approver. So this loop is only going to run once. 
when did this approval respond? So if I search for respond, one of the properties here is the response date. So if I select this, it will put the response date. For the commands, we have the responses commands. And finally, to check how long this approval took to respond, this I can calculate based upon the request date, that's the date at which the approval request was sent to the user, and then the response date, that includes the date at which the approver has responded to that request. So all I need to do here is find out the difference between these two dates. I wrote a blog post on the community forums around how we can get the difference between two dates by using a function called ticks. So this expression, you can grab it from the video description. So I'll just paste the expression right here and click OK. Because we are trying to create an approval timeline here, I also have to put in the original approval commands that we put in place when we updated the item for the first time. I'm just going to add a demarcation and right here from dynamic content, I'll search for approval timeline. That's the name of my column. And from the update item action, because that's where I updated the timeline with that information, I will pick the dynamic content. Next, I want to repeat this for the no branch. So I will copy this, paste it, change the status here to rejected, give my flow a name, and save the flow. So let's create a record. Creating my request, I'll click save. The status here is new. The moment the flow triggers, the first step is we go ahead and we update the item. And we can see that in action right here. The status is pending, I have my approval timeline, and I have the approval pending since, which right now just shows the date at which the approval process actually started, along with the person to whom the task is assigned to. Now, in order for me to show the timeline experience, something like this, here, I've gone ahead and used column formatting. And I've picked up most of these samples from the PNP column formatting samples. I'll paste the link in the description of this video. I'll also paste a link to my GitHub repo, which includes all of these column formatting samples that I'm showcasing here. So in this case, I'll just go and copy this. I'll go and format this column. Go to advanced mode. Remove all the code here. So I've just pasted my code, clicked preview, and I have my approval timeline in action here. Let's save this. This time, it will load up this dialog experience that will show the data within it. Now to calculate the time, once again, I'll go and grab my column formatting and paste it right here. Click save, and I can see that it's been three minutes since this approval task has been assigned to Reza. Let's say Reza approves this, says OK, and submit. Once the flow records that response, we can see the status changing to approved. The timeline has moved ahead. If I select this, it will launch the approval timeline experience for me. Now coming back to the demo help desk solution, let's look at some of the key aspects in here. My flow triggers when a new item is created in my help desk list. Then, I have certain variables that I'm creating here in order to store information of my approvers who are going to be loaded dynamically. Plus I have a variable to store the approval commands as an array. Next, I go to that departments list and query that list to get the data based upon the category selected for the ticket in action. And based on that response, I go and grab all the information for my approvers. That's how I get the dynamic approvers. I've done a video on this. The link is in this video's description. Then comes my main update item step, wherein I just go and update certain properties associated with my item. And here is that approval commands. Next, I go ahead and create an approval. In this scenario, I'm using everyone must approve. And here I'm assigning it to my list of approvers coming dynamically. I'm using create an approval and I'm using wait for an approval. That means I'm starting the approval and then I'm waiting for the response later. And in the middle here, I'm taking some additional steps. I'm also posting that approval action to my approvers as an adaptive card in Teams. 
So they can not only respond to the approval action in the email or in the flow approval dashboard, they can also go to Teams and take a response. Now, once we get the response, now comes the key aspect of looping through each of the responses. And then comes the key part of me getting all the response data. I also had the original commands. Here in that array variable, I'm using the approval commands dynamic property from my update item action. And once this array variable has all the approval commands loaded inside it, next step for me was just to go ahead and join them all and create a single string that I can use to update my approval timeline. And here I've used a data operation action in Power Automate called join. I'm providing the array variable of commands and I'm joining it with this string. Then I check the final response of my approval. In this case, I'm checking to see if the outcome does not contain reject. That means definitely everyone have approved it. I'm going ahead and changing the status of my ticket to completed. The approval start time column, I'm setting it to null. The approval commands is coming from the output of my join approval commands action. And in case of rejection, same steps. The ticket status though, in this case, is rejected. For the timeline, the position of the circle, I'm defining it here using the justify content property. If the status is pending, then I position this at the center. If it's new, then it's positioned at the left, else it's positioned at the end. That is when it is approved or rejected. And for the color property, I'm checking the status of my ticket. And based on the status, I'm setting the color. When I select this circle, it launches the approval history for me. And that is done through a property called custom card props. And right here, posted the data of my approval commands column. To calculate the time, a little bit of mathematical calculations gets the current date and time using the now function and then subtracting it from that date time column, which I'm storing the date and time at which the approval started. And that's the live timer that we see here. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.